skyrocketing rents in Bali are probably the biggest update in 2023 you're going to be interested in. A villa like this used to cost 9 million monthly in rent. Now it's being rented out for 28 million. And even if you're happy to fork out 28 million a month, it's not actually like you're really swimming in lots of accommodation options. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to beautiful Bali. Vitaly and I have been living here since 2021 and sharing our Bali life and adventures with you for the past two years. In the last 12 months, the face of Bali has changed quite dramatically in some ways. So today we want to share with you what's really happening on the ground here with stuff like inflated prices, visas, etc. And also share some suggestions on how to cope with the recent changes if you're planning to come here. Towards the end of the video, we also share our thoughts about some of the more recent Bali controversies like the proposed clampdown on tourism is behaving and the ban on tourists renting motorbikes. So don't miss out on that. First step, yeah, rents for local accommodation has gone up massively. Back in mid-2021, when we first retired and moved here to Bali, ourselves and most people we knew here were paying between 3 to 9 million a month on average for accommodation. 9 million gets you the pretty standard, pretty nice two-bedroom Bali villa with a pool, and 3 million being more of the studio apartment kind of deal or perhaps a simple but older house of more traditional design. So one of our friends who have been living in a two-bedroom villa with pool near the Uluwatu area, he shared with us recently that rent during pandemic for him was a steady 9 million per month. Then sometime in mid-2022, it jumped to 17 million. And then in late 22, it went up to 23 million a month. And now it's being up to 28 million and they've decided to move out and search for alternatives but we hear it's a hard search. It's apparently even more crazy slash expensive if you're in the Changu Seminyak end of things. If you need to find accommodation, the structure of things haven't changed basically. Your first starting point should always be online. You can try Airbnb. All the Facebook groups for Bali housing and accommodation, I'll link these down below. What I'll recommend is to not commit long-term from the outset, especially if you haven't yet had a chance to see the property in person. Because the online photos don't always reflect current reality or the whole story, you know, like what's around the place. So once you're on the ground, you can always suit out what's available in the neighbourhood you like by just going around. There are always signs outside these properties here if they're available for rent or sale. There's not really a way to get around the increased prices, but some suggestions on how to cope may be to consider house sharing with friends or to downsize expectations and costs. Like maybe you don't really need that private pool or that extra bedroom. <laughs> Having local friends and connections or who may know nice deals in some quieter areas always helps. There's also always hope here amongst the Bugis that perhaps once the worldwide post-pandemic enthusiasm for travel tempers a little, perhaps after a year or two, price pressures may ease. So if you're signing a lease at the moment, maybe you don't want to commit for too many years ahead unless you're getting a really good deal. We made this Bali update video because so many of you have been asking us about recent developments and prices here in Bali in 2023. So we hope this gives you a clearer idea of what to expect here in Bali now. Don't forget to smack that like button and subscribe for more. <laughs> Another thing that's really gone up here noticeably in Bali are car rental prices. If you're not a fan of motorbike travel or if you number more than a couple, then renting a car with or without a driver is the most sensible transport mode here in Bali, right? Distances are vast, the weather is hot. There isn't really like feasible public transport options like buses or trains. Back in June 2022, we rented a tiny Toyota Agya without a driver for 5 million. In December, when we did it again, it became 7.5 million. And it wasn't as if, if you're willing to meet the price, you could have a car. It was actually pretty mad scramble to find an available car because it was December, it was Christmas, peak tourist season. We spoke to like 10 over rental agencies and a lot of them were just saying, sorry, no availability. We think that prices are going to keep on rising. And if you anticipate that you're going to need a car and or a driver, best to book ahead to secure one. In terms of 
are the everyday living costs. Mainly, it's the rising fuel prices that have driven up prices of stuff generally. Fortunately, there has been very little significant changes to cost of food in the supermarkets and to eating out at the places we frequent. We know from talking with business owners that most of them try very hard to maintain a consistent pricing to the menu despite fluctuating supply costs. So maybe we notice that if anything, most places here have chosen to downsize their offerings slightly as opposed to increasing prices. <laughs> so fortunately, your daily food and drink budget no significant changes here. In terms of visa and entry requirements, good news! Things are a lot simpler now as compared to, say, a year ago. These days, you no longer need to do a PCR test prior to touchdown in Bali, which is great. <laughs> and you no longer need to fill out the AHAC electronic health alert card, which was necessary in pandemic times. <laughs> Travel insurance is also no longer mandatory. <laughs> Although, of course, sensibly speaking, you should always have some insurance cover when you travel, right? Life now in Bali is also thankfully mask-free these days. But officially, for all travelers aged 18 and over, regardless of nationality, full vaccinations are still required. And officially too, you still need to download and register on the Indonesian Peduli Lingdungi app. That's basically for contact tracing purposes. So for the overall big idea, if you're from any of these nine countries, you qualify for a 30-day visa exemption, but this can't be extended. So the maximum stay is 30 days. As of January 2023, visitors from the following 86 countries qualify for a visa on arrival, which lasts 30 days and costs 35 US dollars or 500,000 IDR. What's nice is that this visa on arrival can be extended for another 30 days if you wish, allowing for a stay up to 60 days in Bali. Other basic requirements include having a passport with validity for a period of up to six months at least, having a confirmed return ticket or a ticket to your next destination, and you need to prove a decent bank balance. <laughs> so the authorities are satisfied you have sufficient funds to meet the expenses during your stay. Around $2,000 minimum is the threshold we hear. <laughs> Although again, a lot of people say they won't ask for all these on arrival at the airport recently. Yet another hot topic in Bali at the moment is the Bali governor's announcement that he plans to ban tourists from renting motorbikes altogether due to a rise in incidents involving bullies, traffic violations and outright accidents. <laughs> Under the proposed rule, foreigners will no longer be able to rent motorbikes. Instead, international tourists would only be allowed to hire car drivers via travel agents. <laughs> this is yet another proposal that's being met with a lot of like raised eyebrows. <laughs> For one, Motorbike rentals are a massive local business here in Bali. It's a source of livelihood for many Balinese, so they're probably not going to be very happy about this idea. For another, traffic congestion in Bali is a serious current problem in all of Bali's hotspots, such as Seminyak, Changgu, and Pasa. The island's existing infrastructure doesn't seem like it can feasibly support the conversion of all the tourist motorbike traffic into car traffic. Plus, I'm thinking, why target the bike rental businesses? Seems to me like the solution should be to ensure only properly licensed tourists can rent bikes and drive them around. Which really means stricter regulations and better enforcement on Bali roads. In any event, again, sensibly speaking, you know, if you're a tourist here in Bali, you probably don't know the way, you're not familiar with the driving rules, and traffic's heavy, it's not easy. So, I mean, I don't care how cheap or convenient it is if you aren't familiar with riding a bike and you don't have the license to. You really don't have any business risking your own neck out there on a motorbike, much less putting to risk other people's life and property too. Which brings us to the topic of traffic congestion in Bali. Well, to be honest, it's not always congested all over, but the key spots tourists like to visit are also where traffic congestion tends to be worse, namely Changu, Ubu, then Pasa. Hence the frustration felt by the tourists and the locals who live there. The Changu back in 2014-15 in my memory was a really hip and chill coastal village. But after the massive development of the last five to seven years, Changu is now one of the busiest areas in Bali and is usually caught in a complete traffic dreadlock half the time. As a visiting tourist, you probably do still want to catch the key tourist sites Bali is famed for. So getting caught in the congestion seems pretty inevitable. 
But little things can help a lot, I think. Like one, starting early in the day isn't only helpful to beat some traffic, but also works well with Bali's natural weather because it's so much more pleasant to do activities here in the early morning and late evenings where it's much cooler and to plan to take rest indoors in the afternoon when Bali is at the hottest. Planning your itinerary for the day, bearing in mind the possible traffic travel times can help. We always check on Google Maps one day ahead for the expected travel times in between stops and do try to get an experienced driver who knows his way around and possible shortcuts, if you can. If I were you guys, I also wouldn't spend too much time on the overdone, overkill tourist attractions in Changu and Ubud, really. Bali has so much more to offer beyond those spots. And you're really missing a lot of the island's organic charms when you miss out on spots like Kintamani, Cinnamon, Ahmed, Beidugu, etc. All places you've probably never heard about but where actually traffic is not congested <laughs> usually and you actually get out of this foreigner village bubble that is Changu and Seminya and you see more of real Bali and the local culture. Back to Changu, the traffic isn't the only thing that's congested. Changu is now a digital nomad hub saturated with social media influencers, <laughs> crypto guys and tech nomads. It's really busy over there and densely populated with this super active, super social vibe. To be fair, from one perspective, it is an amazing entire hipster universe with cool shops, nice cafes, co-working spaces, resorts and hotels and all that jazz. It can be fun for a short visit, assuming you don't actually spend three hours in a traffic jam to get there. <laughs> but on the other hand, Changu does represent one of the most rapidly changing phases of Bali. With the influx of foreigners, there's construction going on everywhere. There's very little of the wonderful natural green features of Bali, like the party fields that used to be there. There's very little of that left. On the one hand, I'm happy for the economic development that has happened, especially for the locals who have benefited and for what it means for Bali overall. But on the other hand, one does miss the old Changu, which was really chill and charming. We can see this rapid pace of development spilling over to around us here in South Bali as well. I can only hope this area has a few more years of chill charm left in it yet. The development is not all bad news though. Bali has been targeted to be developed into an international medical tourism destination and plans even include a collaboration with the world-famous Mayo Clinic. So healthcare standards here are set to improve significantly, which is always a nice to have. There's been a lot of media scrutiny on bad behaviour from tourists in Bali recently. Viral social media posts showing foreigners here driving bikes without helmets, causing accidents, running around without shirts on, putting their feet up on tables, screaming at the police. You don't touch my girlfriend! Clearly, the incidents don't represent the majority of foreigners here. Yet, at the same time, the highlighted incidents are such extremely disturbing displays of bad behaviour. I really empathise with the local people who feel disrespected and uncomfortable. I think a big part of the issue actually lies in a false sense of entitlement these misbehaving foreigners carry just because one is foreigner or white or rich doesn't justify them behaving in a socially disturbing manner and flouting cultural norms. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of these behaviours aren't even acceptable back home where these people came from but somehow here in Bali they feel emboldened to act this way blatantly. It makes me sad because obviously it reflects the really low calibre of the persons involved. But also, it's a very poor way to repay the kind hospitality and patient tolerance the Balinese have extended to all of us visitors to the island in general. Consequently, I do generally support the Bali authorities making all those pronouncements about coming down hard on errant tourists and all the misbehaviours. Although I also think proper governance should be more organised as opposed to off-the-cuff comments. <laughs> and with more thought as to actual effective implementation. By this point, you might think that Bali has become a complete dump in 2023 and is no longer a place worth visiting, but that would be misunderstanding this video. Bali is still our favourite place in this world and there's nowhere else we would rather live in our retirement that has made us so happy. It's an amazing island filled with amazing people, a wonderful spiritual vibe, fantastic culture, art, surf, food, nature, and so many other things. If I had to really pinpoint 
a pivotal point to all the issues highlighted above. I would say really, Bali is so much bigger, so much more than just Changu, Ubud, Uluwatu. And if you just went beyond these areas, a lot of difficulties would naturally resolve. This has been a pretty long video covering so many points. Let me know in the comments below what you think and if there's any other topics you're interested about. But thank you so much for watching and I hope this was helpful. You guys take care, have a great week ahead, speak again soon. Bye!